Hey everyone, hope everyone's doing okay and staying safe. Got another motherboard review right over here for you and also an unboxing video. The MSI B550 Tomahawk MAG motherboard from MSI, obviously geared for Ryzen 3rd and also 4th generation CPUs. There's actually the B550 chipset, so it definitely does not support earlier um, Ryzen uh, generation CPUs. Pretty big box here, let's go ahead and flip this around, take a look at what's inside. There's a nice shot of this particular board here. Basically a mid to higher tier motherboard in this particular system, but no Wi-Fi, which is actually a little bit of a surprise to me, but that's perfectly fine. Most desktops actually don't really need Wi-Fi if that's what you're planning to go, but just wanted to give you that point out right there. You can definitely see it does have the option for LEDs on the board itself, but also has a little connector there on the board itself that will allow you to connect for more LEDs inside your case, which is obviously becoming much more popular these days. One big awesome option about this particular board, as you can see here, it not only has just one, but two Ethernet ports. One's the 2.5 gigabit LAN port, which is actually becoming quite more popular these days. I believe even some routers are even beginning to support this higher tier class of Ethernet port. And of course, it does have your two slots over here for M2 SSDs. Both of them actually have removable heat sinks. Still a question whether or not those things are actually useful, but there you go, you do have the option. I actually am using systems without these heat sinks, so these heat shields, whichever you actually prefer to call them. And uh, they work pretty well. I would say probably if you're gonna be transferring a lot of data from one drive to another, which I've actually done little videos of, maybe you might actually run into an area or a situation where you will actually start to begin to experience some degree of throttling. But I don't believe that's really gonna happen too much. Only in really just severe <laughs> cases there, obviously. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what it looks like. Another thing I want to point out here as well too, you can actually see this uh, little sticker here that they literally just put right over the other one. And I'm guessing the other one was probably the Ryzen 3000 desktop ready sticker. And obviously they just slapped on the 5000 uh, desktop ready fourth generation Ryzen CPU. So this BIOS here will support 5,000 um, Ryzen CPUs right out of the box. You definitely do have the option to be able to do a BIOS update, and I believe this motherboard allows you to do it even without a CPU and also memory installed. If I'm correct, but I'll definitely look into that a little bit deeper. Let's go ahead and pop this open. Here's a first view of the board now being unboxed here. It does have this amazing built-in IO shield. You basically, not the separate plate that sometimes or occasionally gets forgotten. Um, just as a joke, some builders have definitely experienced that at least once in their lifetime so far. Happened to take the entire motherboard out. So I'm actually really becoming a big fan of this uh, built-in thing. Just literally put the case in. The panel just sticks right nicely onto the side there on the rear of the computer for all your ports and USB connections. Going ahead and take a look here a little bit further. Looking over here, here are your two M2 slots, one up here with the heat shield already still on. This is definitely removable. You see that little blue tape underneath. So I believe there's a little bit of like thermal paste, uh, somewhat removable. I don't know, it's kind of interesting. Jerry's still out whether or not these are actually really productive in uh, real, real time use. Go ahead and remove this. This is your generation four slot. And down here you do have another one, but this obviously is a previous third generation, but you still get pretty good speeds out of this. However, the top slot will always be your primary slot for any M2 drive that you plan to use here. Down here on the bottom, you'll see your fan ports, a bunch of them. Actually, just move over here. Yep, looks like there's some here spread out, but I believe there's gonna actually be more on the upper part right over here. You can actually see some more here. Some more for the CPU, um, one made for basically your, if you're gonna be using water cooling, one for that as well too. And I don't think I see, nope, there's one more right there as well too. So it looks like almost a total of about five, six uh, fan ports, probably three or four of them for the actual case fans all around the case itself. Those actually can be used for anything. Just bear that in mind, you don't actually necessarily have to be using fans as labeled. Also six SATA slots right down here. 
you definitely be using SATA slots, obviously becoming less and less popular these days with optical drives no longer really being used. And of course, these mighty little speedy drives over here as well. But some people still connect an old fashioned SSD or particularly like in my case, a mechanical hard drive just for storage. Four terabyte SSDs are not really price worthy at this point, unless of course you're buying an enterprise use. Of course, you do have your slot there for your video card. Uh, X16, PCI Express, again, generation four. And of course, some other little slots here that you can definitely connect, but definitely not generation four. So just bear that in mind. This is obviously the ideal point for a video card. There, of course, is your wonderful slot there for your Ryzen CPU. And down here underneath this wonderful little heatsink, there's actually no fan on the B550 chipsets. So just bear that in mind as well too. I believe I have seen some B550 chipsets with a fan. That's really more reserved for X570, slightly higher tier chipset, which definitely gives you more uh, PCI lanes and of course, generation four slots. Being that this is a newer chipset here, you do have some USB connections for the front panel. Looks like there's one here. And while there's usually one here on the side, looks like there may have been one, or maybe they had the inclination to actually put one here. You do have that connection here for the type C, which is definitely more in demand nowadays. Type C is definitely lean the way. Up here further, obviously you do see the connection for CPU power. Usually there is an additional one here, but not in this particular board. So it's something to bear in mind. If you are planning to overclock, just running stuff at stock speed or slight overclock as well, this actually should be more than enough. So that's definitely a big overview, really quick skim of the entire board. A couple of, uh, let me go ahead and show you the side. Looks like you have about six, uh, USB ports, one of them is type C. Usually it's about seven, but this one actually has six here. Of course you do see your two ethernet ports over here. One of them being the 2.5G LAN connection and a good old fashioned PS2 port. The board is in and the PC is booted up. Here we have the inside the BIOS. I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at some settings here and give you a quick walkthrough of the entire BIOS right over here. So this is basically your easy setup, the default setting you'll actually see, unless of course you switch to advanced up here. Go back here. So you actually do have a couple of options. Um, you do see obviously your CPU, your memory, all the drives that are currently connected here on all the SATA ports and including the M2 drives some fan information, what speeds they're up to, um, what basically uh, thresholds you have here for temperature, and a little uh, help, op here, uh, help option here that definitely allow you to just uh, immediately jump over to some other options. Over here you have your M flash, basically if you want to go ahead and flash your BIOS. This one is dated from uh, early January 2021, so I'm sure there's definitely a newer version already by now. Uh, on their favorites, just a couple of little uh, hotkeys if you actually wanted to set up a hotkey to just immediately jump over to a part of the BIOS. Uh, there's one particular that would probably set up a little hotkey, personally speaking. I'll go ahead and show you that in a little while. Hardware monitor, basically just go ahead and play around with your fan thresholds, uh, basically what triggers, what speeds, at what temperature over here. 
Um, you do have the smart fan modes that basically just do all the work for you. And obviously you can go ahead and navigate through all your fans that are actually connected to this to the board here. So obviously I do see only there's only two case fans and a CPU fan. It basically just tells you how many fans you can actually also have on this board. Go ahead and exit out of here. And just below you also do have the basic integrated devices here, just like uh, your sound card and some other options you do have to actually go ahead and change some things here, including your LED control on the board and also the one that basically the form pin connector you can actually use on your CPU heatsink if you're using the standard Ryzen cooler or any other particular uh, connection for LED lighting you like to use in your case. Pretty straightforward stuff over here. Obviously, if I was uh, if I actually did put some memory in here that uh, basically had some built-in uh, profiles here, you would actually see these lit up. In this case, I actually don't, so you're not going to see that. Over here, you obviously do see your boot priority. Basically, this is the default of basically every kind of boot <laughs> boot way you can possibly have is showing up here, and you can go ahead and um, basically edit all that depending on which device is going to be your boot device. And also if you want to actually uh, check to see if there are any of the other boot devices such as a USB or in rare cases if you still use an optical drive, your CD or DVD ROM drive. Switching over to the advanced setting up here, you can definitely see a bunch of more options, more thorough options, including overclocking options as well. I actually prefer this particular view because uh, this is basically what you you may have been actually been used to in previous BIOS boards over the last couple of generations, if uh, you know dating back to the 90s and the early 2000s. Going to settings, you have a couple of options. Basically, your system status just gives you the current status here. Uh, BIOS uh, date and of course other options drives that are connected. Going to advance you have a couple of options here to go ahead and basically just your boot devices, OS configuration, power management, USB configuration as well too if you actually want to go ahead and um, you know turn on a couple options on or off. But possibly one area you may be going into quite often is this area here where you have your devices that are currently in this particular board and also the ability to turn on and off particular uh, devices. This particular board, just bear in mind, does not have built-in Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, so otherwise that option would appear in this list. Uh, usually if I'm going to be using a, uh, an additional add-in sound card, you can go ahead and turn this off so you're not having multiple sound cards, which may be a little annoying when navigating through the device manager. Some other options as well too. Go ahead now, this is actually pretty important if you're going to be booting up into Windows 10 or 11 nowadays and which kind of uh, boot uh, method you'll actually go ahead and choose here. Obviously CSM is a little bit more popular for that. Over here on the boot, you can definitely go ahead and choose uh, manually which device you'd like to go ahead and boot up from. You can also go ahead and do a little maintenance work and go ahead and remove uh, all the devices that obviously you're not using. I actually personally can't stand it when a computer is spending quite a bit of time trying to look for a boot device from the network card and uh, obviously it's very likely not going to be anything. Corporate worlds definitely are known to actually go ahead and load windows um, from network as well. Not something you'll probably be doing at home, but definitely you do have that option, but obviously it does take a little bit longer to boot up. And of course down here you do have some more options for windows boot up as well. And of course, if you have multiple SSDs by any chance with um, multiple Windows boot up or you're planning to boot this up to another operating system, you can go ahead and choose your priority in this area here. Over here in the security tab, you definitely want to take a look here if you're going to be installing Windows 11 because obviously you'd want to turn this particular option on for Windows 11 to actually install correctly through the TPM security chip. This board definitely does support it but just have to go ahead and enable it. Something to keep in mind, that actually does apply to many motherboards, I would say after two, 2016, even probably earlier, you probably already have that option. Under the old C tab, you do have options here to go ahead and mess around a little bit with CPU settings. Obviously do take caution if you'll be doing that because these uh, can actually make or break a CPU in terms of overclocking. You can definitely go ahead and just leave it at stock. I personally don't really overclock for the most part too much, but the option is in this board. Obviously in uh, advanced computer C CPU configuration, you do have some options. Uh, if you actually wanna go ahead and turn a couple of things on and off, scroll down here, you do have some options as well too for your memory. If you actually want to go ahead and turn on the auto, um, basically the speed, built-in speeds within the memory chips, you do have that option in this section. 
Further down here, some more voltage settings for CPU. Again, something you don't want to mess with unless you know what you're doing. Some additional CPU uh, details in this area here. Uh, memory Z, so obviously this is basically to go ahead and choose the built-in speeds um, for your memory if it actually does have that. So there's that option there. A lot of options in this area you definitely probably can't miss. Uh, if you're definitely looking for one particular option, it's very likely going to be in this section. Going back in the, to the main menu, you do have the same M flash button that will go ahead and reboot the computer, plug in your USB device to go ahead and update your BIOS. On the OC profile, you can definitely have a couple of uh, saved OC profiles if you want to be messing with a couple, a couple of uh, options. You can go ahead and save all of those changes into a particular profile here so you don't have to go ahead and just set up everything all over again from scratch. Of course, here's your hardware monitor once again. And one of my favorite little options in this section on these particular MS5 boards is this Board Explorer. Definitely nothing too fancy, but if you actually go ahead and go over with your mouse, you can actually see what exactly is plugged into each uh, device here. USB ports, PCI Express slot, fan slots even. <laughs> even uh, obviously there's no uh, front panel connector for these USB 2 ports. It does tell you even memory. So it's very, very actually useful to see without looking inside the case um, where stuff is actually plugged in. So basically a good overview of your entire motherboard in this uh, particular little section. That's definitely a quick overview of the BIOS of this particular motherboard, the MSI MAG B550 Tomahawk board. Uh, definitely a pretty heavy duty board during installation, notice the weight. And of course that built-in um, backplay IO shield, whichever you prefer to call it, is always a welcome feature that I'm really happy that now exists on many boards these days. Just uh, can't remember how many times I've actually forgotten to put that little back plate, but most of all people have actually trained or even just assisted on doing their own builds over the years have actually unfortunately just uh, forgotten that as well too. And that particular little feature just eliminates that concern and worry. And finally just another view of the board itself um, actually in use with uh, everything else and all the glory in there. Sorry if it's a little dark. I'm going to try to lift this up a little bit. And you can actually see the LEDs on the board kind of shining on the bottom, giving a good reflection kind of feeling. And a little bit, I would say just a little bit under the VGA card as well. So not too much LED. There's usually some, some MSI boards are known to have some in this area. And even some older uh, X370 boards even had some lighting up here. And of course on the side, not in this case, but... You definitely do have the option using the four pin connectors and other connections as well too to make sure go ahead and get some color in here if that's your desire i know obviously leds are not a fan on uh, basically something on everyone's a fan of but you do have the option in this board and you know a couple little built-ins and things as well too you see a little bit of shine on the top part as well too anyway hope everyone enjoyed this video Got any questions? Let me know. I'll go ahead and answer you know, any little uh, inquiries or other little questions you might have about this particular board. It's kind of a mid to higher tier price uh, motherboard. Um, I would actually say uh, I've actually seen this board priced at around 250 ish maybe even a little more, kind of matching around the Gaming Pro Carbon series, which is around the same price, but that actually does have Wi-Fi and also Bluetooth built in. Just something to keep in mind, what's your priority? Obviously many desktops don't really use Wi-Fi too much. Most of them are just connected uh, via LAN cable, but up to you and definitely go ahead and shoot your choice as well. Shoot a like and subscribe if you found this uh, interesting and of course very uh, informative. Let me know if you have any questions. I'd love to hear it in your comments. Thanks again for watching everyone. And as always, be safe.